Hello and welcome to another episode of My Backstage Pass. This is your host, Lee Zimmerman, and I'm here with my producer, co-host, good buddy, Billy Hubbard. And today we're very excited to have Ralph Stanley II as our guest. How are you, Ralph? Nice to speak with you. Oh, I'm doing great, guys. I appreciate y'all having me on. Well, it's great to have you on. Um, as I was saying, just a little a little plug, um, I happened to have the opportunity to inter- interview your father a few years ago, several years ago. He's the first chapter in my book, Americana Music, so Voices, Visionaries, and Pioneers of an Honest Sound. It's a very long title. So uh, <laughs> it, it's nice to, to connect with you, sir. Yes, sir. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, he was, he was one of the best and he was a great gentleman with it too. Well, he, he was, he was very gracious and very, he had a lot of humility and I knew I was talking to a legend, but he didn't, you know, he didn't make anybody feel intimidated. It was, uh, it was wonderful. And and now it's wonderful to speak with you too. And you have a, a, a wonderful career and, uh, you're doing very well. Uh, what, what's new? What's new uh, with uh, with what's going on with you these days? You have some well, uh, new songs, right? Yeah, I've put, I've put out a couple of new singles in the last year and a half or two, and uh, I'll be coming up on uh, 30 years in the business that I've been making a living, which I've been traveling a lot longer than that. But wow, my dad, my dad gave me the job. Uh, singing lead for the clinch mountain boys august 8th 1995 and so uh next year we'll make uh, 30 years that i've been in the business wow 2000, uh, wow what are you gonna do to celebrate this milestone next year you got big plans well i've got a uh, uh i've got a new C- cd i'll be putting out a full album uh, okay. next year sometime and also uh 2026 is going to mark the 80th anniversary that the Clinch Mountain Boys has been on the road led uh, by Stanley. Mm-hmm. So Compass Records is doing a, a celebration of that, a big album. And I know there's guest artists like uh, Jamie Johnson, Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, Vince Gill, Ricky Skaggs, uh, me and Ralph Two and the Clinch Mountain Boys, and I think. Uh, Billy Strings and I'm not sure but there's going to be a bunch so it, uh, that's going to be a big album coming out probably I've heard of a few of those names yeah. yeah Billy have yeah. you heard a few uh, of those yeah, I think I have. <laughs> up and coming young young town I've heard a few of them yeah 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 and Allison Brown uh, oh I yeah think she's going to be on it as well maybe Steve Martin I'm not sure but there's going to be a bunch wow, wow. That, wow. that's excellent Compass Records is a wonderful wonderful label I know Allison and she's she's phenomenal. We've we've interviewed her, I think, on our podcast, haven't we, Billy? Yeah, we seems did. like yeah, Recently. yeah. I really enjoyed oh, yeah. recording with him. Yeah, oh, she's she, uh, she's phenomenal. So you're you're in, you're in good hands. Well, this is this your first album for Compass, or have you? Yeah, record- well, I'm actually recording some for RBR and my own label, but okay. this big comp this big compilation album will be. Will be on compass. Oh yeah, uh, gotcha. Billy. That's, yeah. yeah, Billy Drove's just at our house uh, over the weekend. That past weekend, he, RBI, RBR guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Billy. Billy does a lot of my. Yeah. Uh, Billy will be doing my vocals as well for my new album. I'll probably put it out on my own label, Stanley Family Records. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Something might change on that, but yeah. Wow. Well, tell us about these uh, these uh, two uh, these singles that you have out now. Uh, you know uh what what uh inspired these songs uh, how did they come about well the last two singles i done was with uh rbr and like i said billy droz you know he uh done the vocals and wrote uh, mm-hmm. uh one of them and uh they kind of picked the song the first one we put out i guess it was a little over a year ago now uh called glendale train it's an older song uh but Billy and uh, Chris Myers thought that that it would suit me, and and it turned out that it really did. I thought it uh, turned out great, and it goes over really well live. Love the crowd really seems to love the song, and it's got a good feel live, you know, to 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 do it on the shows. Right, right. Oh, right. And then the uh, other one that Billy 
I don't know if he had any co-writers or not, but I, he wrote this song for me to sing uh, called Winds of Change. And it's, it's just been out maybe a couple of months now or so. Okay. Yeah. Now, will these yeah. songs be on the uh, upcoming album that, that you put out? Uh, on your own? Uh, no, they won't be on on the upcoming album. I'm doing a, a Clinch Mountain style sound on this album that I'll be putting out. But all right. we're going to get enough songs together eventually where all of these songs will be on uh, a RBR uh, album or MP3 or something. You you, yeah. you got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot going on. And yeah. also, I want to mention January the 17th, uh, Ralph Stanley the second and the Clinch Mount boys will be on the Grand Ole Opry. Wow, cool! Well, so well, I would imagine a, that's a return visit, right? I mean, uh, well, yes, sir. I've I've been there. Uh, I've played it two or three hundred times in my career. Singing just lead two for my or three hundred. <laughs> Is that all? Come on, Ralph. That's it. But really? I've never, but I've never headlined it by myself. So really? it'll, it'll be my first time. So that's that's truly oh, an honor to, oh, yeah. to be asked to be a part of it. That's got to be an auspicious man. occasion. I mean, uh, they're in the spotlight. I mean, I, I can't imagine how that feels. But uh, well, we're really looking forward to it, and I'm so thankful that they asked me to come back, and uh, so we're looking forward to that. So a lot of people might plan to go and get out there in the crowd and support us on that one. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we need to go out for that. That's cool. Yeah, that sounds great. So you're you're. Current band now, if I'm not mistaken, you've got John Rigsby on fiddle and mandolin. Um, you've got Randall Hibbets on bass. Uh, you're on guitar, and you've got Alex Leach on banjo. He's yeah. a local boy here, Alex. Yeah, he's oh, actually yeah. on guitar now. Oh, okay. Alex and I got an 18 year old banjo player that I hired, Curtis Coleman, and uh, John Rigsby is no longer with me at the oh, moment, but okay. uh, I have. Uh, I have Stanley Efall taking that role now, but so I'll be coming up when that 80th anniversary hits. It'll be 10 years that I've uh, led the Clinch Mountain Boys through the 80. Wow, wow, wow! That's yeah. that's, that's got to be a, a very um, again, for lack of a better word, an auspicious position to be in to be leading this classic, renowned, revered band. That's that's got to be. Uh, Oh, that's got to be something well well it's like playing the grand Ole opry it's an honor that my dad had enough faith in me that he he wanted me to to keep the name going behind me and right because you know it started as the stanley brothers and the clinch mountain right Boys, of and course then, yes and yeah. then my uncle carter passed away 20 years into it and and then then it became ralph stanley and the clinch mountain boys for 50 years and so like i said i'll be coming up on the 10th if i can make it to 2026 but you know we're just doing our best to to keep the clinch mountain sound going and i and i do some uh some newer songs as well like that you'll be playing here a little bit later uh All right. maybe a little different but i i try to do a little bit of both but but when my shows are headlined it's ralph two and the clinch mountain boys yeah just real quick i also i i, I read or something maybe heard about how you 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 talked to your dad about it. you said you I guess trying to come up with a name for your band when you're young, and he- uh, yes I asked well what what brought that on was about 2008 or so. Uh, dad asked me to start my own band to start learning how to lead a band, and uh, he said there's a big difference in leading a band and playing in a band, and and he's right about he was right about that and. So he said, I'm not always going to be here. You need to get out here and let people see you for for who you are, too, plus learn how to to front a band and uh, all that. So he turned me loose there, and I started doing that. And not. And then I asked him about naming the band a year or two after that. I said, a lot of these promoters are, uh, they like, you know, bluegrass industry likes band names, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... He said, well, I wouldn't name my band Ralph. He said, I'd go with Ralph Stanley II because he knew, he didn't want to tell me, but he knew that he it was his wishes for me to carry the Clinch Mountain Boys on later, you know, if something ever happened to him. Yeah, right. well, that's cool. You know, I, I would imagine there's a lot of expectation. I mean, this band, uh, your name, it, it comes with the people – 
you know, know and trust and have great reverence uh, for for you and for the Clinch Mountain boys. And, and I would imagine at some point, you know, you got to think about, well, you know, I've got to maintain that high bar. I mean, this is a legacy. I've got to maintain that. I mean, it, it, does, does that enter into your mind? Is it intimidating at all? You know, well, it's not really intimidating. Like I said, it's, it's an honor. I mean, of course, you know, I, I appreciate it and I respect it. So therefore, if you don't get a little nervous or do your best or worry about some things, you're, you're not human, but uh, but as time has went on, it's getting more comfortable. Uh, but I've always respected it and tried to, uh, do the best I can and try to be myself in doing it as well. But at the same time, you know, when some of the fans come out there, that's die hard into, to what build it, you know, we can still offer them that flavor of that. And then plus be ourselves and, you know, we're gaining new fans every day, you know, that's discovering me and stuff too. And, and even discovering what was done before, uh, before my dad passed away or, or Carter, you know? Yeah. 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 I like, I like, I like your new stuff, man. I, uh, or, well, not that I say new, but I mean, I like all your stuff. I appreciate it. We got, we got a couple of them pulled up here. Uh, Glendale trains. Uh, this is a cool one. I'm going to give it a spin real quick. Let's here. give it a spin. That's DJ talk there. Yeah. Let's give it a spin. <laughs> yeah. My best yeah. DJ voice. Let's hear it now, Billy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, somebody robbed the Glendale train this morning, half past nine. Somebody robbed the Glendale train, and I swear, I ain't lying. They made clean off with 16 G's, left two men lying cold. Now somebody robbed the Glendale train, and they made off with the gold. And Charlie Jones was the engineer, he had 20 years on the line. Kissed his wife at the station gate this morning, 6.35. Everything went fine till half past nine. Charlie looked up and he saw men on horses, men with guns, and no sign of the law. Well, somebody robbed the Glendale train this morning, half past nine. Somebody robbed the Glendale train, and I swear, I ain't lying. They made clean off with 16 G's, left two men lying cold. Now somebody robbed the Glendale train, and they made off with the gold. was a package man and he dearly loved his job with company they rewarded him with a golden watch and bob well amos he was making time when the door blew off his car they found amos wide in 15 pieces 15 miles apart That was, uh, I remember the new writers of the Purple Sage did that song years ago. Yeah. Years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, they did it. And Billy and Chris, like I said, thought that 
that it would suit me good and, and uh, the arrangement and everything. I thought it turned out pretty good. Well, it, it did, did turn out pretty good. It did suit you good, man. That's good. It's perfect. You know, I mean, for it's a perfect song for a bluegrass treatment like yours. I mean, it really is. And uh, that's, that's, that's a great tune. Great performance. Yeah, I appreciate it. And like I said, it goes over very good on the live shows too. So that that's that's good that the crowd enjoys it and everything. So how often are you out touring or how often are you on the road? Well, we're probably doing anywhere from 75 to 80 shows a year at the moment. And wow. uh, I hope I'm hoping to maybe cross the hundred mark. Uh but I remember when I started singing lead for dad in 1995. I think we was doing about 175 to 200 shows a year. We was playing Jeez. an average of five or six days a week. Man. Wow. Because there was a whole lot of bluegrass festivals back then. Uh, and plus, you know, performing art centers and things. And uh, we, we'd we always go out west for three or four weeks at a time and play like 30 days right there. And like in the month of February, we was, it was every bit. We was hardly ever home, I know, back for the longest time there, but. We're probably at about 75 to 80 at the moment. Well, that's still a lot because you got to count travel time in there too. Yeah, so yeah. that's a good percentage yeah. of a, of a year out there yeah. working on the road, you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. And then we're still doing the Dr. Ralph Stanley Memorial Bluegrass Festival at, at dad and Carter's old home place, uh, the Hills of home. Uh, it's every Memorial day weekend. So we do a four day, event there so maybe some of y'all's listeners that might yes. not know about it they can check out uh, dr ralph stanley festival.com and we'll be having the lineup here soon but there's a lot of info about it on there now they can check out so that's on memorial day it's on memorial day weekend it's the right. wednesday so next thursday year, next 2025 yeah. okay yeah, yeah right. it'd be like May 20th through May 23rd or something like that, I believe, next year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I bet that takes a lot of organizing, a lot of uh, management there to make that happen. Yeah, it does. And it started in 1970 by my dad. And, huh. uh, you know, by the time he started that, a young Ricky Skaggs and Keith Whitley joined his band. Mm-hmm. And uh, they was a big Stanley brother at Myers and, and could sing just like them. And, uh, but the old original stage still stands under the hill that Keith and Ricky and my dad and their dads and a few other handy men built. So the old original stage is still down there for people to go and check out. A lot of people goes down there and sings a song on it or whatever, you know. Very cool. Yeah, that's a lot of history, I'm telling you. But it's it's a great festival, a lot of camping, you know, for campers, tents, whatever. And then there's motels within yeah 20 to 30, 40 minutes away, you know, so. Yeah, my wife would want a motel. She's not a camper. Just the way it <laughs> yeah. is, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, glamping. Right. Yeah. Glamping, yeah. yeah. Want to glamp. <laughs> so I, I read in your bio that it was watching a video uh, of Keith Whitley that kind of made you think, yeah, I, I want to do this because maybe initially, well, you were just a kid, but initially you weren't so sure that that's what you wanted to do and seeing that video kind of put you over the top? Well, I always listened, you know, the Stanley brothers going to bed. I had a tape player or whatever beside my bed, listened to all. I loved the music. And then I was just always young. Like you said, I got up to about 12 years old. I was sitting and watching this old video when Keith was singing lead for dad and Mm -hmm. Curly Ray Klein was the fiddle player. And Curly Ray was actually over here at my dad's house with me watching this video late one night. And wow. I just remember watching that and it blew my mind. It was like one of the best shows I've ever seen. And I I don't know that I've ever seen a show better than that to this day. Uh, but wow. it's a lot of it's on YouTube now, but that was on an old VHS that a lot of people hadn't seen at the time when I seen it, but huh. that really lit a fire under me to, to want to be the rhythm guitar man, lead singer. And, you know, I play lead guitar too, but, but it really wanted me to, that really, you know, I was like, if I can do that and do half as good a job as Keith done for my dad, then, you know, that's what dad would need, you know? So I, I just, it just something clicked and I just went from there, you know, and then I'm here I am today. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, look, I, I apologize for asking the question, but I know you've, 
you know, been asked this before. It, you're, you've, you've stepped into some big shoes, you know, and uh, people would naturally think it's in your bio that because you're the son of somebody very famous, that it's easy for you to do that. But on the other hand, we all know that, you know, you have to meet certain expectations and it's you have to prove yourself. You have to prove your own talent, too. So it's a kind of yin and yang there about, uh, you know, being the namesake of, uh, of a legend. I mean, so I, I'm sure people have asked you about that a million times. I oh, apologize yeah, yeah. for it's, repeating. It's, but, it's, well, but, it's, uh, that's the, you know, that's just the way it is. You can't escape that. But like you said, you, at the end of the day, you got to do something. I mean, that might help you get in some situations to where mm-hmm. you can do things, but at the end of the day, it, it, it could be hurtful too, but you've got to go out there and, and give the people something. You got to offer them something that they want to hear and buy tickets to, to see you. And, and, you know, so you, you, at the end of the day, you've got to earn it, you know, for yourself. And sure. Yeah. It won't get, and it won't, it won't keep going either very long if you don't have it. And no, that's right. You, and you've yeah. already had, what, is it seven? Number one singles have it. I've actually had nine number one singles now. Yeah, that was that. I need to get them to update that. They're going yeah. so fast. Yeah. The, going so fast, the internet can't keep up with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't keep up. Yeah, and I mean, I've been honored to win a Grammy and uh, an IBMA award, and I've been nominated wow. several times for Grammys on my solo albums oh, as man. well. Yeah. Wow, wow. So I mean, I've I've been blessed. I mean, when when you've accrued such honors like you have in the back of your mind, when you start a new project, do you think, well, I have a certain uh, level, a certain high bar that I have to live up to, you know, does that enter into it at all? I mean, do you think about that? Not really. I just, however I'm feeling at the time with, you know, kind of what the music and how you're, or whatever band you're with, you know, sometimes band members change, come and go, uh, you know, it, I just always go in and try to do the best I can on each and every one of them and uh, and then let everybody else decide, you know, which the last couple of albums I put out on my own label was pretty good records, but didn't really have a chance to get into the Grammys because I, I dropped the ball and didn't get uh, submit my record label so I could submit them as uh, oh. uh, to be voted on. So I, that was my fault as a, as a label because... I'm more of an artist than a label, really, but I'm learning as I go on the label. Uh, I kind of enjoy building my own and owning my, a lot of my own music, too, you know, especially the Clinch Mountain stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's not easy, yeah. though. I mean, that's not easy running a label, having to tend to business, and also being an artist. It's two different sides of the brain, you know, in a certain yeah. way. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. But... I don't know. I admire you for being able to do both things, uh, you know, simultaneously as you need to do them, you know? Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. We're, we're just doing our best. So hopefully I'll, uh, next time I put one out for the Ralph two and the Quincy Mount boys, we can get it eligible to, to be voted on and hopefully get back there sometime. It was surely a great experience, uh, for the two nominations and the one win, you know, it was, it was a great wow. time experience. Wow. Wow. Well, we're gonna we're gonna hear another song here, "Winds of Change." So, uh, yeah, and this is I think this is the latest one. Is this right? The new one. Yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Came, mm-hmm. came out this is summer, I think. Yeah. Well, let's give it a okay. Well, a let's spin let's hear some of this then. Feels like the sun shining a little bit brighter this morning. A different kind of feeling. Sweet winds of change, sweet winds of change are changing my thinking, taking me to places I ain't never seen. Sweet winds of change, I'll follow where you lead me. All I ask is you don't leave me be. Same chattering, keep blowing round my way. Sweet winds of change. Ain't got no direction 
Sweet winds of change, sweet winds of change are changing my thinking, taking me to places I ain't never seen. Sweet winds of change, I'll follow where you lead me. All I ask is you don't leave me be. Sunshine rain, keep blowing round my way. Sweet winds of change. Winds of change are changing my thinking, taking me to places I've never seen. Sweet winds of change, I'll follow where you lead me. All I ask is you don't leave me be. Sunshine or rain, keep blowing round my way. Sweet winds of change. My wife was just talking about Winds of Change yesterday. She'll love this song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think it turned out really good, too. Like I said, I I really enjoy working with uh, Billy Droves uh, with his songwriting skills and his producing skills. And also, Billy's a, a great singer, uh, entertainer in his own right as well, you know. And uh, Oh, yeah. So I really, I really enjoyed the relationship that, that we've built together so far. Yeah, he's a he's a dear friend of of mine, my wife Sarah's. Yeah, he's he's out here occasionally. So he he has great things to say about you too. By the way, he's yeah, and, and I Donna. appreciate that. So yeah, man. Well, so uh, you know, speaking of winds of change, though, notice how I make the professional tie in here. This is this oh, is a segue, Billy. This is a segue. Winds of yeah. change. Um, <laughs> Bluegrass has uh, really become sort of this populist phenomenon over the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. And a lot of new bands have come into the fold um, and kind of given it a contemporary feel, you know, and it's almost like deadheads now, you know, people flock to these shows and they follow these bands. What do you think about it? I mean, are there bands out there that you're particularly fond of that are in this sort of new wave, so to speak? Well, you know, I, I appreciate everybody, you know, trying to take it in a, in a new direction, but I also uh, appreciate kind of what I'm doing is staying true to the old sound that built it. Plus, you know, uh, doing some newer stuff and yeah there's a lot of great bands out there uh i mean billy strings is one of them that that has took bluegrass to i mean instead of 700 and a thousand seat uh theaters he or art centers he's taking it to to arenas that people like uh george Strait or whoever plays you know i mean he's he's really took it to a, uh, another level and it makes me feel good to see somebody doing that. And plus out on the stage, uh, singing, uh, Stanley brother, Ralph Stanley songs. He sings quite a few of them. And, and I've talked to Billy uh, a time or two on the telephone and he's very appreciative of Ralph Stanley senior. And, uh, I bet. and I think he even said he come and saw us maybe when he was a, a young little boy, you know, uh, wow when I was singing lead for dad. And uh, so, you know, it, it's great to see, but there's a lot of other great bands, but he, he is really uh, taking bluegrass somewhere that I didn't ever, ever really see it going really. You know I mean? It, it's, uh, it's as popular as rock concerts, you know, uh, yeah. was back in the eighties uh, for him now selling everything out like that, those big arenas. Right, right, right. Well, it's 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 wonderful what you do, Ralph, to carry this legacy forward and to us make your own name. I mean, it's it's about uh, you know uh, 
a, a resume and reputation that you can claim for your own. You are a singular artist in your own right and making wonderful music. And, uh, well, we appreciate you, buddy. We, we appreciate what you do. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. I appreciate you guys too for, for giving, uh, spreading the word out on all the artists, to to give people a chance to find out a little more about them and their music and everything. And uh, we appreciate what you guys do. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. We appreciate you. Stick and around for a minute, Billy. Gonna... Yeah, we'll do our sign off here, but we, sign man, off. We, we appreciate your time. And, uh, yes, we'll, sir. We'll put your, oh yeah. I need to ask, I forgot to ask your, uh, now what's your website yeah. address? I can look it up, but I, maybe just... okay. My, uh, website is Ralph two with a number two dot com. Ralph. Com. Okay, cool. Appreciate you guys, and I've really enjoyed being on there with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Well, big thanks to Ralph Stanley II. Wow, that's a, that's a cool new tunes you got going. Also, big thanks to uh, author and music journalist Lee Zimmerman here for our uh, host of today. And check out Lee's book, 30 Years Behind the Glass. And then he's got another one on Americana Music out there on Amazon. Please like, subscribe, share, and subscribe to My Backstage Pass on your favorite platform. And we'll see y'all next time. Happy trails. Happy trails. <laughs>